విస్తరేణాత్మనో యోగం విభూతిం చాచనాడన భూయ కథయ తృప్తిర్హి పూయ కథయ తృప్తిర్హి శ్రీన్వతో నాస్తి మే మృతం ఓ చనాడన అగేన్ ప్లీజ్ డిస్క్రైబ్ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ ద మిస్టిక్ పవర్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఆప్లెన్సెస్ ఐఎమ్ నెవర్ సెట్ సేషియట్ ఇన్ హియరింగ్ అబౌట్ యూ ఫర్ ద మోర్ ఐ హియర్ ద మోర్ ఐ వాంట్ టు టేస్ట్ the nectar of your words purport a similar statement was made to sutta goswami by the rishis of nami sharanya headed by shonaka that statement is vayam tu na vitripyama uttama shloka vikrame yachinvatam rasagyanam swaru swaru pade pade one can never be satiated even though one continues to hear the transcendental pastimes of krishna who is glorified by excellent prayers Those who have entered into a transcendent relationship with Krishna relish at every step the descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.19 Thus Arjuna is interested in hearing about Krishna and speci- specifically how he remains as the all-pervading Supreme Lord. Now as far as Amritam Nekta is concerned, any narration or statement concerning krishna is just like nectar and this nectar can be perceived by practical experience modern stories fiction and histories are different from the transcendental pastimes of the lord and that one will tire of hearing mundane stories but one never tires of hearing about krishna it is for this for this reason only that the history of the whole universe is replete with references to the past times of the incarnations of godhead the puranas are histories of bygone ages that relate the past times of the various incarnations of the lord in this way the reading matter remains forever fresh despite repeated readings om agyanti mirandasya gyananjana salakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha ముఖం కరోతి వాచలం భంగుం లంగాయతే గిరిం యత్పాతమహం వందే శ్రీగురుం దీనతరణం శ్రీ చైతన్యమనోభిస్తం స్థాపితం దీనభూతళే స్వయం రూపకధామయం దాతి స్వదాంతికం శ్రీకృష్ణ చైతన్య ప్రభూ నిత్యనంద శ్రీ అద్వైతగదార శివసారి గౌరభక్తవృంద హరే కృష్ణ హరే కృష్ణ 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 హరే హరే hare rama hare rama 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 hare hare o chanardan again please describe in detail the mystic power of your opulences i'm never satiated in hearing about you for the more i hear the more i want to taste the nectar of your words hi krishna so shila prabhupad begins here this purport is a wonderful statement of the shrimad bhagavatam right in the beginning the 19th is the 19th verse of shrimad bhagavatam which he quotes vayang tu navi tripa uttama shloka vikrame yachinvatam rasa gyanam svadu svadu pade pade which is spoken by the sages of naimisharanya and which should be also an impetus and a, 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 for inspiration for us because they had said they are never tired of hearing about the lord which is for <coughs> us often times um, very difficult But why is it difficult for us? Because we have no attraction for Krishna. And this is a very important realization. It's not that we come to the temple and uh, become devotees and uh, should think, I'm a devotee now. We were far not devotees. A devotee is someone who is intensely attached to Krishna. And this means intensely attached to Krishna Katha especially. Like Parikshit Maharaj, she was listening seven days straight and was not tired. So how much can we? We cannot even listen one hour. in the morning <laughs> so many of us fall asleep isn't it huh? i don't blame anyone we are all in the same boat uh, but we are in a very fallen situation and mahabrabhu also expresses this in the shikshastra kam verse second first where he says that i have no attraction for the holy name i have no attraction for the holy name so if in mahabrabhu says that what to speak about us but he does something against it so we are even so space out that we know we have no attraction for the name and don't do anything about it this is a problem yeah 
Because the holy name is the most sweet. Tunde, how was it? Tunde tanda venira ting votada, tundavali laptai karna kroda kadambini katayate kanabu debia spriham. Where Rupa Goswami says, when I hear the holy name, I want to have thousands of ears. And when the holy name is dancing on my tongue, I want to have thousands of tongues and all that. We have no clue. So, but this should make us eager. I want to taste the holy name. I want to have taste for Krishna Kata. I want to be a devotee. I want to be absorbed in this Kata. I want to be advanced. Yeah. And when we have this um, desire, then it will manifest. Then only then it will manifest. Only then it will manifest if you really want to be advanced devotees. So, but the problem is that we don't want to be advanced, that we don't even know what advancement is, and don't, that we don't even know that we admire. <laughs> we don't know that we admire. We don't even know what Maya is. Yeah, we know the material world sucks, you know. <laughs> it's, it's tough, it hurts. <laughs> but it's all about, yeah, so how much do we really know? But it can be changed by our desire. Yeah? We have to change our desire. So, here Prabhupada speaks more about this, how this kata is always fresh. It's always interesting, it's always wonderful, it's always nice. Yeah? And this will manifest in when we hear about Krishna, when we hear about Krishna. Yeah? Here Prabhupada says, it's always fresh despite repeated readings, even though we read so much, it will always stay fresh. So, this is what we have to do. So here, is this the translation or what do you do there? Yeah, <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, this is um, very important. And one, one interesting point that was actually what came, what came to my mind here, when Prabhupada said here, uh, in the translation of this verse, I found the translation very interesting. It says, when we have, when we entered into a transcendental relationship with Krishna, then we will relish at every step the descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord. When we have established a relationship with Krishna, then we will relish these descriptions in, on every step. But we need this res, uh, uh, relationship with Krishna. That means... When we don't understand Krishna, if it's just a word, a name, or some theoretical thing, where will be the taste in hearing about Krishna? But the more we have a relationship and we understand who Krishna is and what Krishna is, then there comes also interest in his pastime. Then we will be very interested what happened 5,000 years ago when he was on this planet. And it's actually an amazing story. It's very amazing what he did when he was here. So Krishna appeared in uh, Vrindavan. Actually, he appeared in Vrindavan, not in, not in Mathura. And, uh, but the story goes, he appears in Mathura, Nanda Maharaj brings him to Vrindavan, and he grows up as a small baby, and very soon begins to make uh, wonders, killing Putana, a huge uh, baby-eating witch, and he kills her. He kills a wind demon, Trinavarta, who is flying to kill. Because Kamsa, he wants to um, get rid of all the children, the newly born children, because there was a prophecy that some child, which was born now, and he doesn't even know where it's born, will kill him. So he sends all the demons to kill all the children. But he doesn't know. That when he knows, it comes later, when Narada Muni tells him. But in the beginning, he did not know. He did not know where the child is. So he sends all the demons out, and all the demons who come to Vrindavan, they get killed by Krishna. So Krishna stays for some years in Vrindavan and grows up with all these villagers who not really know that he's God. Yeah? And they don't love him because he's God, they love him because he's so wonderful. And they have intense relationship with Krishna. Krishna is most beautiful and most kind, most nice, and all of them live together in Vrindavan with Krishna. And the, in the beginning he's a small baby and the main relationship is with his mother. And Nanda Maharaj. They have like the strongest relationship because small children have strong relationship with their parents. So they are in the, in the center. But Saliyaras is more in the center. And then he grows up a little bit, comes into Komara age. And then he has more relationship with the cowherd boys. 
and uh, he runs around in the forest and they herd the cows and they play games and they have a good time. And then he grows a little older and then he comes more into Madhurya Ras, where suddenly the relation with the gopis is more interesting. Not more interesting, but it, it unfolds, there's more relationships. And then at a high point of his manifestation, when Vrindavan is most beautiful, everything is wonderful and colorful and flowerful and most romantic, and Krishna has the wonderful pastimes with the gopis, and suddenly he leaves Vrindavan. This is the point where like, everyone is completely attached to him. He manifests all his beauty. There's Nava Yovanam. It said then Krishna's beauty is most manifested when he's 16 years. In age like 16 years, he's most beautiful, most nice. Then all the rasas are manifested. And the whole, he, he, he uh, enchanted whole Vrindavan. Everyone is attached now to Krishna. The gopis, they only think about him the whole day when he's uh, out with the cows, herding the cows with his friends, uh, still playing with his friends hide and seek and running around, imitating the animals, killing demons. For the coward boys, it's always fun. <laughs> it's always, every day is a complete uh, adventure. And I was thinking actually about the pastime, which happened later. <clears throat> I can tell a little bit, but you have to imagine. Imagine you have a friend who does always extreme cool things. Extreme, it doesn't matter what, it, it does amazing things. And then you go with your friend on an excursion. And this is what happened later when Akrura came. You know, Akrura comes to Vrindavan, takes Krishna away from Vrindavan to bring him to Kamsa. Kamsa wants to fight against him. They come to Mathura and in this wonderful chariot, they stop at the gates on the, on the border to the huge city Mathura. It was a huge city. Actually, Krishna has never been outside of Vrindavan. He has only seen a village, a Vedic village and cows and nature and forest and pasturing grounds. Krishna was never in a city. And his boyfriends have never been to a city. Nobody has to been to a city. So suddenly this, they are standing on the border of this huge city. Mathura city is described as huge. With huge walls and huge palaces and buildings like Vedic city. And Krura is so attached to Krishna. says, please my lord, come to my house. Not house, he probably has a huge palace. He's one of the main people of the city. Akrua is not just some messenger. He's like a king almost himself. Yeah? So Kamsa is the main king, right? He has his huge palace, his influence. But his ministers, advisors, they live in almost the same opulence. So Akrua says, please Krishna, come with Balaram and all the, your friends come to my house. I really want to serve you. And Krua is so attached to Krishna. Imagine you can have association of Krishna. Yeah, you also say, please, Krishna, come to my house, come to my ashram, <laughs> come to my sleeping bag. I don't know what, what you will say. Some of us have a house here. Huh? Who has a house here? Oh, Narahari, you have a house. <laughs> two, 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 two rooms. You can invite Krishna to your house. Most of us can invite Krishna to our sleeping bag or to a room. <laughs> So, but Akrura said, oh, please. And he's not saying it just out of etiquette. You know, now I have to say, please come to my house. He says, please come. He's pleading with him. Please come with Balaram. And because they were traveling on the road to, from Vrindavan to Mathura. But at the same time, uh, uh, Nanda Maharaj was traveling with the cowherd men and cowherd boys in the bullock cars through the, for through the forest. And it seems this was a quicker road and they were already there, in a camp, outside of the city. And the crew says, please bring everyone to my house, I want to serve you. This is Vedic culture, you want to serve your guest. And who would be a more amazing guest than Krishna? So he really wants to serve him, and Krishna says, it's okay. And the crew says, no, please. And Krishna says, no, no, it's okay. Um, you go into your house, uh, I see you later. And the crew is heartbroken. He's really sad. Oh no, I want to serve you. I want that you come with me, but you don't come. So Akrura goes off. And now Krishna and it said they were traveling the whole day. It was a long journey after, from Vrindavan to Vrindavan. So it was already evening. It was like even, evening. So, and the cowherd men, they built a whole camp outside of the city. Because they know we will stay a couple of days here. And they brought their bullock carts and some tents and no ladies came. The ladies stayed in Rindavan. Just the men went there. The older and also the coward boys, Krishna's friends, they also came. 
So for them, it's like a powerful, cool excursion. Wow, we go to Matura. Wow, we go to Matura. This is the first time they must have been really excited. And what is Krishna doing now? He comes also after Akrua leaves them. And, he, and they meet him and say, Oh, Krishna, here you are. Now we're in Matura. It's so cool. And Krishna says, What? Let's go into the city <laughs> in the evening. Let's take a walk. Let's watch the city. Let's see how it looks. It's the capital of, of, of the kingdom. And it's uh, Krishna with all his coward boys. Yeah? Normally they run through the forest. But now they run through Mathura. And with Balaram, they make a stroll and look and see the huge palaces and the houses and the, the beautiful Mathura people who are dressed completely different than villagers. Like they are you know, vill- city people. Yeah? And it said the women are amazed and stand on the rooftops and see Krishna the first time. They heard about him. Many people heard about Krishna. And this everywhere it spread that Krishna makes amazing things. He's so strong, this and that. And suddenly they see him, this famous Krishna. <laughs> and Krishna walks with the coward boys and walks to the city. And look here and there. And he was, whoa, look this, look that, wow. And then a, that suddenly comes a, a, a washerman, uh, a, the infamous washerman with a donkey, full with new washed, perfect clothes, best quality, best quality. And Krishna sees this cloth, and Krishna is interesting. He says, "Wow, that's nice. We want to have that." And walks to this washerman and says, "Oh, my dear washerman, we are new to the city. Look, we are dressed like you know villagers." We need this fancy cloth. Please give it to us. And the washerman was upset. Who are you? How dare you ask for the cloth of the king? Don't you know those are the cloths of the king? I am the king's personal washerman. Who are you? Ask this again and your head will roll. (laughs) He was really nasty. (laughs) But whose head will roll now. <laughs> and Krishna, it's tough, you know, only devotees can hear that. This is only for devotees. Everyone else will blame Krishna, because the demons always want to blame Krishna. Devotees celebrating. Everything what Krishna does is perfect and wonderful. We don't have to judge it into some moral box. Krishna looks at the guy and makes a move like that and cuts his head. <laughs> oh no! And, and everyone is a little bit shocked and coward boys. Yeah, they know Krishna is powerful and this and that. And say, so, yeah! <laughs> and it actually said, you know, that this guy was in the last Leela when Ramachandra was there. He was the guy because of whom Ramachandra left Sita. You know the Thunarari? Yeah! This rascal finally gets it. <laughs> he was the guy who was responsible for the biggest drama of the whole Vedic literature. You know, Sita got kidnapped by Ravan, and after this whole struggle, this whole war and everything, Ram finally gets her back. A huge happy end. Huge happy end. Most <coughs> wonderful. Like the high point of the Ramayana. The high point of all Leelas finally gets her back, they fly back, they live happily in, in uh, Ayodhya as a queen and king. And because of this idiot who said to his wife, oh, you were out at night, maybe meet some other man or something, I will reject you. I am not like Ram, handpacked. His Sita was with some guy and he took her back, but I am not like this. And this is why Ram told Sita, you have to go. Because I cannot accept such, you know, people use anything they can to criticize. So I, and he rejected her, which is the biggest sad story, or isn't it? So, but now Ram as Krishna finds this guy and his head rolls. <laughs> this was the guy, and then came back, he had to come back in Krishna Lila and Krishna kills him. So anyway, the head rolls, the guy is gone. And what are the coward boys doing? They take all this cloth and they dress themselves somehow or other. And they're really funny, you know, coward boys, you know, boys, 
<laughs> playing around, dressing. Oh, now we are also like these mature people. Look, one boy, college boy, look at me now, how fancy I look. Oh, and look at me, and I have this fancy stuff. Oh, and they dress themselves. And interesting is that then they keep on walking, and they come to a, another kind of uh, cloth merchant who knows how to dress properly. And he puts everything very nicely on them. And now they really look cool. Now they are styled for the city. Now the cow it was a style for the city. And they walk further and Krishna comes to sue them. The garland maker gives them a garland. All very nice. He gives them blessings, this and this and this. And so they walk now through the city. They have huge garlands, most beautiful dress. First time in the city. It's evening. It's nice evening stroll. So a Mathura city 5,000 years ago must be cool. And so Krishna makes his appearance in Mathura and Kamsa hears already about him. Yeah. So I don't know why I went into this now, but this is Krishna's Leela, it's very wonderful, it's very nice and only possible to relish if we have some relationship with Krishna. If you have some relationship, appreciation, if you like Krishna, you want to hear about him. Isn't it, if you love some, you want to hear about him or her all the time, isn't it? But if there's no love, if there's no relationship, you don't care. So we need this relationship with Krishna and then we can absorb ourselves in Krishna Katha. And so this more and more heart gets purified and we get changed to love Krishna. This is the purpose of Hare Krishna movement. We should love Krishna. But this is not some uh, vague and abstract thing. It's very practical. You like to chant his name Hare Krishna and you want to hear about his most wonderful activities in detail. And you're interested. So this is why Prabhupada uh, speaks on this. The taste, there's a taste, there's some nectar, and we get absorbed in this wonderful kata, and it will be always interesting. And it will be more interesting than anything else, more interesting news, more interesting than anything in the world, more interesting than anything. You just want to hear about Krishna. Again and again and again. So what is now happening? Now they are dressed. What is happening? What is he doing now? What's coming next? Yeah. So we have a long way to go until Krishna con to become Krishna conscious. But we should keep on going and never tire. We should never tire in our sadhana. We should always keep on going. The price which we could get after this life is great. You can walk with Krishna through Mathura then. You enter into his Leela. Imagine being part of that. Or being a Gopin Ras Leela, being some friend of Krishna. Yeah, be, you can enter into Leela. This is Prabhupada's promise. Back home, back to Godhead. But we, sh we cannot tire. We said here, Vayang tu navi tripyama. We are never tired. We should be never tired to serve Krishna. Okay, so. I wish you all the best for your spiritual life. Don't get tired. Stick around until the end, until your deathbed. Don't make any stop in Krishna consciousness. Make this your purpose of life. I will stay. I will follow these principles. I will chant my whole life. I will my whole life have Krishna in my heart because <laughs> I would be stupid if not. <laughs> what does the, you know, how much do we want to hear how Maya is terrible? And how much do we want to taste how Maya is terrible? Well, we are so stupid. So we should believe in Prabhupada. You know? Prabhupada sacrificed everything to bring us this message. And he expected us to be serious followers of this. Uh, and Krishna wants us back. Prabhupada says actually in the first canto, in the second chapter, verse, I think, 17 or 18, in the purport, he says, Krishna wants us more back than we want to go to him. Isn't it? How much do we want to go to Krishna? Yeah, sometimes a little bit. Yeah, yeah sometimes more chai, sometimes less chai. But Krishna is always chai. Where is the guy? What is he doing again? Where is she? Where, where, where? Why? Because he, he loves us. Because we are parts and parcels of him. And he really wants us back. He really wants us back. This is what Prabhupada says. I cannot understand it. But this is what Prabhupada says. He really wants us back. And we are very slow. Like Krishna's calling, please come. Yeah, yeah. Window shopping, a little bit this, a little bit that. We should be running. Running, yes, Krishna, I'm coming. <laughs> and how do you run? Always think about Krishna. Always chant the holy name. 
always take part in temple program and kata and all that. And in the heart, we should actually go deep in our heart and really pray and cry for Krishna Bhakti. Deep in our heart. Go really deep, Krishna, really. Somewhere there's a little spark of desire and longing. A little lauliam is there. So we should make it bigger. Please, my Lord, make me a devotee. I'm such a rascal. Lifetime after lifetime, as Bhakti Nuttaku sings, Anadi Karma Pali. Lifetime after lifetime, I have this karma, this attachment to material world, and still I have it. I hear so much about you, and still my heart is like a stone. Please, Nasingadev, with your nails, thunderbolt nails, destroy this hard covering of my heart and make me a lover of your of your of yourself. Yeah. The prayer is very important, a heartfelt prayer, deep in our heart, deep in our heart. And we have to find this deepness in our heart and work on this, really go deep in our meditation, our prayer. Anyway, we have a lot to do, but very important point is to understand that we have a lot to do. On this I end now. We should understand that we have a lot to do. We shouldn't think it's, that's it already. We are staying on the shore of the nectar ocean of Krishna Consciousness, on the shore. And we should really take it serious. It's a, a question of life and death. We should take it very serious. Because to chant in a moment of death is not an easy thing. It's not easy. Life is, can be very difficult. <laughs> as long as we are bhaktas and just brahmacharis like this. It's, easy but even the, the, even then it can become difficult and we should be prepared and now it's time for preparation Hare Krishna anything to add okay thank you so much yeah yeah Maraj. what happened next Krishna <laughs> I wanted to, to ah I want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> huh? Okay, shortly. I, I tell the evening. Okay, okay. I tell the evening. Okay, the evening. Only the evening, <coughs> not the next day. Only the evening. So then they walk further, and the Krishna hears. He sees like a hall, like a assembly hall, and many people are there, like an arena. Many people there, and everyone's going there and looking, and then, wow, wow. And Krishna says, "Oh, what's going on there? We have to see this." And the card says, "Oh, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. What's that? What are, what's going on there? There are so many people there. Ah, let's find out." And they go inside. And they built a big stage. And on the stage was a huge bow. And it was a huge bow, which comes up put there. It was like a sacrificial bow, like a huge prestige object. And it's reminded oh, of, of Kamsa's power and glory. And Krishna goes there, behind the, there was like a fence or something. He goes behind this and uh, goes to the bow. And the soldiers, they cry, what, 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 what are you doing? Stop, stop, stop. And Krishna, Psh, and who are you? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and he takes this huge bow and breaks it. <laughs> it was a huge bow and Krishna just breaks it. And he said this sound when it broke was so loud. It was... <laughs> and through the whole city, everyone could hear it. Everyone was, what's going on? What's going on? It comes from this hall. And also Kamsa could hear it. Oh! And Kamsa was already... You know, a little bit afraid. Kamsa's rasa with Krishna was a bibatsa. No, was it bibatsa? Baya, baya. It was like fear. He, Kamsa was most Krishna conscious, he said. Most Krishna conscious. He was always thinking about Krishna. In fear. Shivering. He was shivering and fear. Oh, is Krishna coming? What's Krishna? Oh, where's Krishna? Oh, maybe he's here. Oh. Oh, it's not Krishna. I thought it's Krishna. Okay, oh, Krishna, when will, and one day he will come. I will prepare. I'll put this one there while the fighters are Krishna. Oh, he looks like Krishna. Oh, no, Krishna. Oh, no, it's not Krishna. But he was always afraid. And when it said in this evening, his fear was rising even more. Because then this, he heard this sound. And then Krishna, the soldiers, they ran to Krishna and wanted to kill him, actually. How dare you? You would break our bow of the king. Krishna was already, you know, killing this guy and, you know, walking around proud. So, you know, the rumor spread already. He, uh, Krishna is there, you know. Krishna was psychological warfare. This was psychological warfare, right? Playing cool in the, in the enemy's city. 
Like there's nothing and killing here, killing there, being like proud and everything, you know. So, and then the soldiers ran towards Krishna and Krishna takes this pose and beats them. And they, oh, oh, and he kills them. Oh, with Balaram. And everyone is running away, ah, like whole terror. There. <laughs> so it was a big thing. And actually then Krishna comes out and, and says to his coward boys, ah, now it's late, let's go back. No. So they, let's call it an evening. So they go back to their camp, but the so, they, they, they Kamsa hears that now. Krishna is here. He destroyed your bow and killed all the soldiers like nothing. And then he's like really afraid. <gasps> but he cannot show it also. And okay, okay, I have this, I have this. And then the next day he has all this arrangement to kill Krishna. But if, what was, I was meditating about, now they go all back. And in the camp, there are the older cowherd men. And how must the cowherd boys be excited and tell their fathers, well, oh, the city is like this, and we met, uh, 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 he killed this one and that one, this one, that one, and oh, Krishna is so amazing, it's so amazing. How must the life of a coward boy be? You know, they experience that, yeah, and tell. And the man said, really, this is what, yeah, he killed the, car, the washerman, he killed the washerman like this, no, like, yeah, and the, uh, like this, oh, really, yeah. And then they bow, oh, Krishna is so amazing. <laughs> And he made one hunchback lady into a beautiful girl. This is also their kupcha. No, she's like old. No, not old. Actually, said she had a beautiful face. She was actually beautiful, but she was like this. No, she had a back like this, hunchback. And she had this sandal paste. And she, anyone Krishna met, it was interesting, some were inimical. And some were immediately giving Krishna something. Mm -hmm. So she had sandal paste, freshly churned, best, best sandal paste for Kamsa. But she saw Krishna and she was so attracted to him and she put the sandal paste on him. Nice sandal paste. And Krishna was so pleased and he stepped on her toes with his fit, foot and he pu pulled her up like this and made her straight. And she transformed in a most beautiful girl. Most beautiful girl, and standing there, and she was thankful, and immediately she was very attracted to Krishna. And she said, Oh, dear, thank you, oh, my great hero, please come with me, <laughs> come to my house. And it's like Krishna was very embarrassed. But, oh, no, it's okay, <laughs> in front of Balaram, his elder brother, you know. <laughs> yeah. So many, many details, but okay, I end now because it's late. But the point is, read Shastra very. Consciously, and one shloka, one scene, one verse becomes very alive. You know what I mean? It's, it's, you, we don't need so, many, it should reveal itself. The Leela should reveal itself, and then we enter into the Leela and it becomes very nice. And one detail, like for me, last days, almost last days, I meditate on this point. When the coward boys come back after this excursion from Matura, and how do they, how is the scene in the camp? How they tell everyone, and just this made me so ecstatic to think about this, how they come back with Krishna, and it must be alive, and it can, if we do it properly. And then you chant Chapa, and you think about this. Okay, you should share the holy name, yes, but at the same time, Krishna and Lila should manifest. It's very nice, very nice. So much nectar. Yes, okay, thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Kalantara Chinat Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanande.